Hello, hello and welcome back to Cars of Glasgow. I'm Thomas and today you join me with the 2024 Toyota Yaris Cross GR Sport Hybrid and a special thanks to Toyota of Helensburg for loaning me this vehicle today. So we'll go ahead and jump inside the front. We're greeted with GR logos on the steering wheel, on the floor mats and on the door sill down here. And go ahead and jump inside. Now what you're going to notice is this GR steering wheel is probably one of the first things you're going to notice with the red stitching and it's got this kind of perforated railer look on the side. We do also have this texturised material on the door card and overall visually the first impressions when you're looking at the car it is a nice feeling cabin. It doesn't feel do not look super cheap or anything for one of the lower end Toyota crossover models. That's a nice place to be. Do not quite like how this is kind of rubberized and you can dent and dent there. This is kind of like a nice finally material up top. And the places you're going to touch, do know, it's quite nice as well. Now this is the 1.5 liter hybrid that the four mentioned. Fit in the brake. And we're going to get the new infotainment screen popping up here, similar to what we've seen in the Toyota CHR. So up front we do have this little instrument display that is fully digital and you can change through power, eco and normal mode. I quite like how the graphic of the car rolls in. <laughs> it's quite a neat touch. Um, and then on the right hand side we've got your cruise control, left hand side of the steering wheel is your voice and your telephone and radio controls. Physical stops for things like your wipers and your indicators which you may be taking for granted in 2024. We do have a fast responsive touchscreen. You can cycle fit through things like your sat nav, your phone, your radio, whatever it may be. We do have physical buttons again for things like your climate control, which if you're a fan of that, then you've got this. It's going to be the car for you. It's not buried from the touchscreen. And we have heated seats you can have hand high and low, USB C chargers, 12 volt power outlet, and a wireless phone charger down below. And of course, a glove box, which is softly damped, fairly large, um, and you've got a bit of storage in there. We do have aforementioned drive modes here, traction control, EV modes, so if there's enough battery in the car, maybe you want to go up your driveway or something in electric mode, you can do. So this is the hold button here, so we push that in, you're going to get the little green hold up here, and what that means is you're able to approach a set of lights or, you know, prevent the car rolling away basically so that's what that's for and then underneath here we do have two cup holders an armrest that is movable and it has a little bit of storage inside as well the two seats up front this is the gr sports so we do have slightly sportier bucket style seats what we call it a little bit more aggressive bolstering we do have again the red stitching going across and that red material behind the suede that we've seen in the rear but we do have big gr logos in the headrest there which and a nice little nod if you're into the GR brand because you're going to get that through and through. And overall, I'm pretty impressed with the space of the car as well. We do have reach and rake on the steering wheel, so if you want to pull that up and down, we can do so. I'm 5 foot 11, I've got plenty of headroom, so I've got a good few inches above me, plenty of shoulder room, and the seat is manually adjustable in this variant, so I'm able to push that forward and back. And we also have a little button on the side there for lumbar support, so you do have a little bit of that as well for to get yourself comfortable. Here we have the rear seat. As you can see, we do have this kind of suede material here with the red behind it, and we've got the red stitching with the black leather. Isofix points for the child seats are just easy to locate here. Pull the bit of plastic out and slide your child seats into there. We also have these little mat pockets down here. Each side behind the driver and passenger for storage. The road floor itself is quite flat as well and wide, so you could get a rear passenger in the middle. As you can see, not the most amount of leg room, but as a compact SUV, so it's going to be fine for maybe carrying grandkids or something like that. You join me in the back of the Yaris Cross, five foot eleven, got a couple of inches of headroom, shoulder room's all right. As you can see, the seats split 40, 20, 40, so you're probably not going to get yourself three adults back here too badly. Leg room we do have, and behind myself, a couple of inches of knee room. Foot room's okay, foot floor relatively flat as well. Uh, no air vents back here, a charging port, but we do have little mat pockets. All in all, not too bad space back here. 
and raw material in the back isn't the same as up front so it is all that kind of washable wipe down. Plastic, we do have a little bottle holder there, handle, release and an electric window switch. On the sill of the car, as you can see, we've got this little black bit of cladding kind of going down and that just gives it again a little bit of that crossover vibe and feel. And we do have Yaris Cross on the side here, which is a little nice touch. Around the rear, I do like the styling of it. I think it looks pretty much like some of the other Lexus and Toyota products. It kind of jars out, it's a little bit more visually 3D kind of to look at. Um, and this one does have the lights, the indicators pulsating across. We do have a little vortex generator down here that we've seen in other products as well made by Toyota and Lexus. But all in all, I think the rear end looks quite good. It has not changed too dramatically over what you've seen in the outgoing model. This is just a facelift. Jump into the rear of the car. And this is the exciting bit. So we do have the nice GR mat and this trim. But what I liked about the Yaris Cross was A, the low tight, because you can see I'm 5 foot 11. You've got a relatively flat floor. You can just go in and put in your items, but you can also lift this up here. So if you wanted to change your load floor, you have that capability as well. So it is quite a functional boot, you know, if you want it flat on this level, you can, and you can change it to whatever your requirements may be. Maybe you need to lift the floor up and have it a little bit lower if you're carrying plants or something like that. We do have this little net here, uh, which kind of covers <laughs> your goods that are in the boot. There is pros and cons to this. I would say that one of the main pros of this is you're able to fold this up and store it neatly versus a solid one. And if you've got anything kind of oddly shaped, it's going to push through and, you know, give it the form a little bit to the shape of the material underneath, but you're not going to have something rigid and popping up. So there's, again, two pros to there. We do have a little 12-volt power outlet over here. And the side of the boot is that kind of wash scratch resistant kind of plastic um, so it isn't all carpeted in the sides there which means if you've got something like a dog you're not going to have to worry about that getting hairs into that's going to be nice and easy to wipe down as you can see as well probably from here you're able to see that the boot is able to get a little bit larger by lowering the seats we do have a 40 20 40 split here so we can fold that middle one down and have these two larger bits at the side here just to give you a little bit more room go ahead and close the boot this car uses a 1.5 litre three cylinder hybrid powertrain that is the only variation of powertrain available here in the UK other markets I have heard that there is a non-hybrid variant but here we have hybrid only now there is various power outputs if you get a lower spec one such as an icon you're going to get about 160 brake horsepower hear that cvt up the hill and then if you're something like the gr sport or above we're going to get a power increase to 130 brake horsepower so that's going to change your zero to 60 time zero to 60 is about 10 and a half seconds or maybe closer to 11 if you're in the lower trim versions top speed is about 106 miles per hour but you're buying this Yaris Cross for economy and comfort. So, what does it bring? Well, we have a nice, comfortable ride. We've got a little bit higher than the standard Yaris hatchback that I loved when I drove that. So that means getting in and out of the car is a little bit easier. And you're going to be expecting over 50 miles to gallon in real world driving. You know, I have seen that some articles saying high 60s, maybe 67, 68. I'm getting just around 52 miles to a gallon. I've had the air cone on, stop, start to take photographs and video clips, etc. today. So realistically, on a nice run, you're probably going to get about 57 easily. Um, again, maybe having slightly smaller wheels might change things, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm just going to give you my honest opinion. Pricing for the Toyota Yaris Cross in the UK, you're looking just over £25,500 for the Icon trim and you're over £31,000 for a high-spec model like today in the GR Sport trim. Now there is a premier trim that gives you things like the heads-up display and other goodies. Now that is a little bit more money again. So that is the Toyota Yaris Cross. If you're looking for a nice driving, comfortable riding, 
small crossover, please check it out. It's got a 10 year warranty, which is going to be a nice benefit to some owners looking to keep a car for a while. And other cars in this segment to consider would be something like the Ford Puma, Nissan Juke, etc. So thank you very much to Helms Toyota for loaning me this car. As always, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Ciao.